2.4 GHz radio transceiver for IEEE 802.15.4 and Zigbee applications. Atmel. Welcome to this training module on Atmel's AT86 RF230 2.4 GHz radio transceiver for IEEE 802.15.4 and Zigbee applications. This training module provides an overview of the RF transceiver and discusses its internal circuits and operations. IEEE standard 802.15.4 defines the physical layer and medium access control sublayer specifications for low data rate wireless connectivity with fixed, portable, or moving devices with no battery or very limited battery consumption requirements typically operating in wireless personal area networks. The main objectives of these networks are ease of installation, reliable data transfer, short range operation, and a reasonable battery life while maintaining a simple and flexible protocol. IEEE 802.15.4 devices listen before they transmit. If there is interference, the device either waits for a period of time and retries or moves to another channel. Message acknowledgement is also available for improved data delivery reliability. The IEEE 802.15.4 protocol is designed for monitoring and control applications where battery life is important. The protocol is the work of and property of the Zigbee Alliance, a consortium of more than 70 companies who have joined together to create and promote the new standard. Zigbee is designed to serve a diverse market of applications that require low cost, low power wireless connectivity. The standard focuses on low data rate, low duty cycle connectivity, a market segment not serviced well by existing standards. Zigbee is a hardware and software standard built on the recently ratified IEEE 802.15.4 standard. It defines the hardware and software, which is described in networking terms as the physical and medium access control layers. The Zigbee Alliance has added network and application layer specifications to complete what is called the Zigbee stack. The AT86RF230 is a low power 2.4 GHz radio transceiver especially designed for Zigbee or IEEE 802.15.4 applications. The AT86RF230 is a true spy to antenna solution. All RF critical components except the antenna, crystal and decoupling capacitors are integrated on chip. Therefore, the AT86RF230 is particularly suitable for applications like wireless sensor networks, industrial control, home and building automation, consumer electronics, and PC peripherals. The AT86RF230 can be operated by using an external microcontroller, like Atmel's AVR microcontrollers. It provides a complete radio transceiver interface between the antenna and the microcontroller. The AT86RF230 transceiver comprises an analog radio transceiver and digital demodulator. The received RF signal at pins RFN and RFP is differentially fed through a low noise amplifier to the RF filter to generate a complex signal. This signal is down converted with mixers to an intermediate frequency and fed to the integrated channel filter. The limiting amplifier provides sufficient gain to drive a succeeding analog to digital converter and generates a digital received signal strength indication signal with three decibels of granularity. The analog to digital converter output signal is sampled by the digital baseband receiver. During transmission mode, the modulation signal is generated 
in the digital transmitter and applied to the fractional N frequency synthesizer generating a coherent phase modulation required for demodulation of the offset quadrature phase shift keyed signal. The frequency modulated RF signal is fed to the power amplifier. A differential RF port provides common mode rejection to suppress the switching noise of the internal digital signal processing blocks. In receive mode, the RF input provides a low impedance path to ground when transmitter M0 pulls the inductor center tap to ground. A DC voltage drop of 20 millivolts across the on-chip inductor can be measured at the RF pins. In transmit mode, a control loop provides a common mode voltage of 0.9 volts. Transmitter M0 is off, allowing the PA to set the common mode voltage. The common mode capacitance at each pin to ground shall be less than 30 picofarad to ensure the stability of this common mode feedback loop. The AT86RF230 receiver is split into an analog radio front end and a digital baseband processor. The RF signal is amplified by a low noise amplifier and down converted to an intermediate frequency by a mixer. Channel selectivity is performed using an integrated bandpass filter. A limiting amplifier provides sufficient gain to overcome the DC offset of the succeeding analog to digital converter and generate the digital receive signal strength indicator signal with 3 dB granularity. The intermediate frequency signal is sampled and processed further by the digital baseband receiver. The RX BPP performs additional signal filtering and signal synchronization. Finally, the signal is demodulated and the data are stored to a frame buffer. The AT86RF230 transmitter consists of a digital baseband processor and an analog radio front end. The TXBBP reads the frame data from the frame buffer and performs the bit to symbol and symbol to chip mapping. The offset QBSK modulation signal is generated and fed into the analog radio front end. The fractional end frequency synthesizer converts the baseband transmit signal to the RF signal which is amplified by the power amplifier. The PA output is internally connected to bidirectional differential antenna pins so that no external antenna switch is needed. The crystal oscillator generates the reference frequency for the AT86RF230. All other internally generated frequencies of the radio transceiver are derived from this unique frequency. Therefore, the overall system performance is mainly based on the accuracy of this reference frequency. When using the internal oscillator, the oscillation frequency strongly depends on the load capacitance between the crystal pins. The total load capacitance must be equal to the specified load capacitance of the crystal. When using an external reference frequency, the signal needs to be connected to pin crystal 1 and the register crystal mode of register 12 needs to be set to the external oscillator mode. The oscillation peak to peak amplitude shall be 400 millivolts but not larger than 500 millivolts. The internal voltage regulators supply the low voltage domains of the AT86RF230. The AV reg provides the regulated 1.8 supply voltage for the analog section and the DV reg supplies the 1.8 volt supply voltage for the digital section. The supply voltage regulators can be configured by the register by register 10, V reg control. If you use an external voltage source to supply the low voltage domains, the internal regulators need to be switched off by setting the register bits to the values AV reg external equal 1 and DV reg external equal 1. A regulated external supply voltage of 1.8 volts needs to be connected to pins 
DVDD and AVDD. When turning on the external supply, ensure a sufficiently long stabilization time before interacting with the AT86RF230. The battery monitor detects and indicates a low supply voltage. This is done by comparing the voltage on the external supply pin with a programmable internal threshold voltage. The signal bit Batman OK of register 11 indicates the current value of the battery voltage. If Batman OK equals zero, the battery voltage is lower than the threshold voltage. If Batman OK equal one, the battery voltage is higher than the threshold voltage. After setting a new threshold, the value Batman OK should be read out to verify the current supply voltage value. A supply voltage drop below the program threshold value is indicated by the bat low interrupt. Since the AT86RF230 is a true spy to antenna solution, it can be operated by an external microcontroller. The figure describes the transceiver to microcontroller interface. The interface comprises a slave spy and additional control signals. Microcontrollers with a master SPI interface directly to the AT86RF230. The SPI is used for frame buffer and register access. The additional control signals are connected to the GPIO interrupt request interface of the microcontroller. The SPI is designed to work in synchronous or asynchronous mode. In synchronous mode, the clock M output of the radio transceiver is used as the master clock of the microcontroller. In asynchronous mode, the SPI master clock is generated by the microcontroller itself. The SPI is based on a byte-oriented protocol and is always a bidirectional communication between a master and slave. The SPI master starts the transfer by asserting select line low. Then the master generates eight spy clock cycles to transfer a byte to the radio transceiver via master out slave in. At the same time the slave transfers one byte to the master when the master wants to receive one byte of data from the slave it must also transmit one byte to the slave. All bytes are transferred most significant bit first. A SPI transaction is finished by releasing the SELECT line by setting it high. The AT86RF230 differentiates between six interrupt events. Each interrupt is enabled or disabled by writing the corresponding bit to the interrupt mask register, register E in hex. Internally, each interrupt is stored as a separate bit of the interrupt status register. All interrupt lines are combined via a logical OR to one external interrupt line. If the interrupt issues, the microcontroller shall read the interrupt status register, which is register F, hex, to determine the reason for the interrupt. Interrupts are not cleared automatically when the event that caused them is not valid any longer. The radio transceiver state is controlled by two signal pins and the register 2. A successful state change shall be confirmed by reading the radio transceiver status from register 1. If TRX status equals 1F hex, the AT86R0230 is on a state transition. The reset pin causes a reset of all registers and forces the radio transceiver into TRX off state. If the device is in the P on state, it remains in the P on state. For all states, the state change commands force TRX off or TRX off leads to a transition of the TRX off state. If the radio transceiver is in the busy receive or busy transmit state, 
the command force TRX off interrupts the active receiving or transmitting process and forces an immediate transition. The completion of each requested state change shall always be confirmed by reading the register 1, which is transmitter status. Here describes basic procedures to read and transmit frames using the AT86RF230. While in state RX on, the radio transceiver searches for incoming frames on the selected channel. A detection of a valid IEEE 802.15.4 frame is indicated by interrupt request 2, which is RX start interrupt. The frame reception is completed when using interrupt 3, transmit end interrupt. A frame transmission comprises two actions, a frame download to the frame buffer and the transmission of the frame buffer content. Both actions can be run in parallel if required by critical protocol timing. After a frame download by a frame buffer write access, the frame transmission is initiated by asserting the SLP TR or writing the TRX command TX start to register 2 while the radio transceiver is in the on PLL on state. The completion of the transmission is indicated by interrupt 3. An application circuit of the AT86RF230 radio transceiver with a single ended RF connector is shown in the figure. Ballon B1 transforms the 100 ohm differential RF port to a 50 ohm single ended RF port. Capacitors C1 and C2 provide AC coupling to the RF signals to the RF pins. The digital interface can be interfaced to a microcontroller directly. The ATA VRR-Z502 is designed to evaluate the Atmel AT86RF230 2.4 GHz radio transceiver. The accessory kit enables point-to-point -point links to be developed, debugged, and demonstrated. More advanced network to topologies can be developed by adding additional RF accessory kits. The kit is the top module for the STK500 AVR starter kit and requires an STK500 or STK501 development kit.